Mind Body Life show hosted by Frederick Entman on Global Voice Radio on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern. During his show, Mind Body Life founder and best-selling author Frederick Entman investigates the little-known insights and daily methods used to create explosive life transformations and transitions with those that have risen from struggle and ascended to greatness. Here is your Mind Body Life host, Frederick Entman. Well, welcome to Mind Body Life podcast. I am very proud and excited to announce this is my first go around at this. And with me today, I have Stephen E. Schmidt. He is the number one book coach. He has sold over 2 million books worldwide, and he helps people worldwide to write their own purposeful, best-selling book. But what I like most about him is he also, like me, has a background of human performance. And Stephen E., Stephen E., there he is. Oh, there I am. Hey, thanks, Frederick. So cool to be on this show, man. I am so honored to be on this show. And wow, what a great show. And I can't wait to share some good content. Absolutely. And what what intrigues me most about you is, you know, when I met you two years ago, approximately. Um, wow, for, I guess my perception and you know perceptions but i'm in ohio and you're out west living yes essentially my dream and um getting to know you um someone that has achieved such success i was flattered to see how harmonized you were and uh you feel it just through speaking to you so i would love to delve into that you know this is the mind body life podcast and I know you and I could talk for days, but yeah, yes. we're, we're going to kind of get more specific about your particular mindset because your, your story is um, pretty deep. But yes. I'd, like to, I'd like to start in, let's say, your 20s yeah. as opposed to now. And I know there was a defining moment for you. I would love to hear how you went from the fitness world to what you're doing right now. Yes. What clicked for you? Yeah, you know, Frederick, for me, around age 19, I had a true awakening. And I moved down to the Laguna Beach area. And I was just so drawn to that ocean of Laguna Beach. And it's such a magical place. And uh, with me, I was sitting on the beach. And uh, I just realized that all my actions and even my thoughts were creating my world and that that's what really came into me is like wow can i really create a life that i want to live and way back when i was 19 years old i had no clue i thought life was just going to be hard uh i thought i just i just thought life was difficult i really did and right there i really had that just that awakening of just realizing that life is a big dream and and basically, what's in my mind and my actions are going to create this life. And through there, Frederick, um, I'll never forget, you know, in my early 20s, um, I started manifesting things. And I started manifesting. I manifested three things. And I didn't have anything to lose. I, I, I was holding in my pocket. Every day I was reading, I live right on the beach. I have a new best friend. And I have a beautiful girlfriend. And I was just seeing that, and I was visualizing all of this. And uh, sure enough, it came to me one by one. Uh, I got this new best friend, and he's a really famous artist around the world. And at the time, he was about 25, 26 years old. He was living right on the beach uh, in Laguna Beach in John Wayne's old house. And he had his own elevator that went down to the ocean. Oh, he became like one of my best friends. And then I got this really beautiful girlfriend, and then the next thing, boom, I was living right on the beach, the sand in Victoria Beach and Laguna Beach. And I just knew for sure that, man, this life is kind of like a dream. And what I put out there is going to come to me. 
so from there, uh, I wrote my first book when I was 21 years old, but I was a fitness guy. And I thought God spoke to me, um, I'm going to go out and sell millions and millions of books. And that did not happen. However, what happened is I was a young fitness trainer and I had this book. And most of my clients were pretty wealthy people. And uh, what happened, I started attracting all these wealthy people in my life because they were really impressed that I had a book. And then from there, I just, you know, I, I loved doing it, being a personal trainer way back then and helping people with body, mind, and spirit. In fact, my company was called The Balance Method, Body, Mind, and Inspiration. Was so, it, yeah. Was, was that your gym? Is that correct? You um, at the, at, In the beginning, uh, I worked at a health club, but for some reason, in my early years, I grew up sort of in that whole poverty consciousness, and I needed to change my mind. So I was focused not only on purpose, but about making money. And so I was working in a health club at the time, but I saw at the time all these personal trainers were all sort of on their own. It was all these individual personal trainers. It wasn't really one company. And I so I, I created actually a, a business inside that health club. And that's how I first got started. I created uh, trainers, a, a massage center. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I actually put this whole system into a personal training company in a 30,000 square foot health club. So wow. that was my first opportunity. And I started making a lot of money <laughs> at a young age. And then you know, I ended up going to UCLA, uh, studying exercise science. Then I became a Pilates instructor. I love being on purpose as a trainer because for the first time, it's like, wow, I get to do something I like and make money doing it because I was a buff kid. I was ripped and everybody wanted my body because I was, I just was a physical fit guy. I love working out. So that's how it all started for me, Frederick. And we have a commonality as well. That's actually my first degree. It was exercise science. And oh, uh, yes. Kinesiology. Yes. But what, surprises me about you is um it's very difficult to be a trainer i started with sports performance so, yes for example i worked with florida state university it's a completely different um background when you consider you have a university backing you yes yes Dif different frame but yes. uh, when you go into business essentially for yourself um what things did you do to, to become successful? Well, because, yeah. Everyone's a trend. Yeah. Everyone. I really, I, I do know that. And, and um, I used to speak uh, worldwide and even I went to some colleges and spoke to um, just, uh, you know, master's students or business students, students. And one thing I used to always share is that I really think that we need to get our business. We know how to run business. We, you need to put the systems in. But one thing I really honestly understand, purpose. When you have a purpose, everything comes to you. Do you think like Jesus Christ or Buddha or Martin Luther King or Gandhi really thought about business? No, they had true purpose. And then all the other people showed up to help the movement of, which was a business in a sense. They had to share it. And it was so well shared that we know about what I just said, about the four people I just mentioned. So for me... I do sometimes see people try to get all their systems and everything, their business degrees and all that kind of stuff. That's all good. But I'll tell you, purpose is way stronger because when you're on purpose, enthusiasm is contagious and people know that. And then also people want to help you. People want to develop your business, especially if you have something that's going to go worldwide. So I really do believe in purpose first and then all the other people, the business people, the accountants, all the stuff you need in your business, they'll all show up. And for me, I always learned that I could hire anybody. I could hire MDs. I could hire PhDs, engineers. It's because I have purpose. And they'll all show up. And we all need other people in our business. So that's number one, purpose. So working, working with people, you know, people hire me. Yeah. Achieve purpose and harmony. And it, it's unbelievable. The word purpose almost confuses someone that's, let's just say, out of alignment or not where they want to be. So, yeah. For you, how would you define purpose and what would you recommend for someone that, yeah, back on purpose? What do you think is the best way? 
Well, that's funny you said that because I use purpose all the time. And one of my buddies just recently said, he says, you know, not everybody understands purpose. Yeah. And when he said that, I'm like, really? But <laughs> now you said it. So there's a second yeah. time. So maybe not. But for me, get, going back way back in 19 years old, I asked God or universe in, my, in meditation, I said, do I have a calling in life? Do I have something that I'm good at and I could share with the world? So that's what I want to share about. What does purpose mean? Is anybody listening, what is purpose to you? It may be a mother having a beautiful little kid, a little child. I mean, that is purpose all the way. A mother like holding her little child and breastfeeding and just loving that little child so much. That's purpose. But in business, what are you so good at? Like an Elon Musk. I mean, it's just like... He's good at what he does. Or any names that you know in a big, big uh, uh, in, in life, they're good at something. And so that's what purpose is like. What are you uniquely good at? And it doesn't have to be big. It could be you could be a purposeful taxi driver it, because you're like serving people around New York or LA, and you're like getting them safe into the right places. But you take pride of your purposeful job. That yes. could, that's it. That's, that is a great point because purpose is so fulfilling no matter what you're doing. Yes. And, and I find people really get into trouble when they start comparing their purposes to others. And yes. they, they think they want to be with someone that's on purpose and they try like crazy, but it's, it, they get deeper and deeper into overwhelming or depression. Yes. Um, yes. And I like what you had to say. It doesn't matter what you do. It's, it's what your purpose is. And that is up to each individual to find that. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yes. And, and purpose change changes throughout life too. Like I went to a personal trainer uh, with purpose and, and then it went to books and, and even now I'm still on purpose, but a lot of times purpose will evolve from a person. And so it keeps on changing in life too. And maybe, and I also I want to point this too. I'm a true entrepreneur. I love doing things because I have that, I have that, just that energy to do them. I always like, I always like that part in uh, Forrest Gump where he's running and he just stops one day and they say, why are you stopping? He says, it was time to stop. I think a true entrepreneur, you do something, you ride the wave and it's fun. And then one day you're like, what's next? I already did that. What's my next purpose in life? And so some people like a FedEx or a company that's been around forever, maybe they have one purpose and they share that throughout life. So some people, your purpose can change throughout your, your, your years of growing as a man or a woman. And it's those transitions that a lot of people get caught up in the mix or they're, they're afraid during that transition to, to where yes. they're stuck in their, their old story. And they, yes. the fear overcomes them into the new, um, whatever it is. It, I, I like to use my story as I was an athlete and my career came to a sudden end because of a unforeseen injury. And all of a sudden, something that defined me didn't any longer. And um, I think that happens to a lot of people, whether it's a job loss or your kids move out of the house, whatever it may be. But yes, you really need to be prepared. And how, how would you say someone makes that smooth transition into the next step? Because you, not everyone's yeah. like you, just openly yeah, allows it well, or steps in. Yeah. Or, yeah, and you say smooth, but I don't think it's smooth <laughs> to anybody. You know, the, the, the caterpillar coming into the cocoon, to the butterfly, it's, it's painful. And for me, you know, one thing that really helps me, uh, I go back, even when I was about five years old, and, and I think about, I remember I, want the, I wanted a bike. And at Christmas time, I thought, hey, Santa Claus or mom's going to bring me the bike. And I didn't get the bike. And I remember I was sitting out on the porch and I was crying. And my older brother came up to me. He's like, what's wrong? And I said, well, I didn't get my bike. And, and then he's, and he didn't say anything. He just like, he just put his hand on my shoulder. But the next day he came home and he worked at a gas station. He was only about 16, 17. And uh, he flipped me a silver dollar. 
and, uh, and, and I, I caught it. And he goes, save that. And then next day he came home, the silver dollar, save that. And I saved up for this bike until I had enough money for a bike. And I went and got that bike. And I remember I was so happy. So for me, a lot of times when I'm going through that change, I think about good things that everything I've ever, ever wanted in life, the beach houses, the Porsches, the Mercedes, the girls, or where, whatever it was at the time in my life, I've always manifested. And so when I'm going through change, there are a lot of times I say, have patience. Everything is perfect as is. Enjoy this journey now. And I really mean that. Enjoy the journey now because it is a journey. Sometimes, man, we could uh, have everything in the world. Sometimes we need to let go of it. And as a Buddhist says, having more attachments is more painful. So less desires and attachments, that's where we get tangled up. So for me, I always get back in the moment saying everything's perfect as is, and it will change. And remember, everything you've even wanted as a five-year-old kid, it always comes to you. So this is not going to be any difference. So okay. I say go back and say that if anybody's listening, find some of your small success successes and see if that works. Yeah. So you're saying just feel into it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, yeah, and, and, and sometimes our, our minds manifest a lot faster than this reality. So a lot of times we're maybe quicker. You know, we want things that manifest hate. And we're not if it did, it would be too boring a lot. So enjoy the journey wherever you're at. It's still good. And I guarantee if you look back at it, it's going to be good. Maybe it's not good right in the moment, but you're going to look back on that wasn't too bad because the only struggle is only in the mind. That's where struggle lives, in the mind. Everything's perfect. Go outside. Everything's perfect. It's only you are struggling in the mind that's not perfect. It, it's very rare. I will also speak to one that's achieved such success as yourself. Um, I think it's interesting as to how our culture defines success. Yes. Because to me, California is a very materialistic place where everyone that everyone dreams about because they think, wow, I'm going out to California to make it. Yes. And I want the mansion and the Ferrari and all the sports yes. cars and the, so on and so forth. But what is success to you? Well, that, that's a good question. And in my early 20s and 30s, I have to say that success was money. It was cars and it was uh, having that sort of fame. And, and, and again, I think we all may need to go through that one time. But what's true success is waking up any time of the day and being happy no matter what. Maybe you're walking out and you see a butterfly in the clouds and that makes you happy. It's not a big check. And now I have to say, I go, like, it, it's, it's so funny because that's what most people, and all you guys listening right now, too, you act like, oh, money's no big deal. But if a guy pulls up in a Ferrari and he gets that out, you're going to listen to him. If you saw him pull up in some Toyota Camry, you're probably not going to listen so much. Or if you go to one of those seminars, if he's up on stage, you think he's the guru. Well, you know, a lot of that I want to say is BS because true success is really where you live within yourself. And true success, like I have more success than I've ever have in my whole entire life. And I have less material stuff than I've ever have in my whole entire life. And I have to say, I have more success now defining success in my life because I'm happy. I have good friends, even good friends like you, Frederick, good people are coming into my life, loving, good friends, family, joy, happiness. And I'm happy for no reason. Not because I have a big paycheck or I get in a nice car. I'm happy uh, just walking down the street. And that's true success to me. I would have to agree because um, I've been around some, some very, I would just say, filthy, rich, successful professionals. Yes. And I see their homes, I see their, their cars, and then, you know, they might even have a second one or a, yes. or a third. And to me, it just always felt a little empty. Yes. It always felt like there's more. There's, yes. there's more to the picture. And I always felt like the, the more external I journeyed outward, with just stuff, materialistic yes. stuff, 
is almost like I don't I not only wanted more because there's no end to that path, but yes. The more I started working on myself, the more happy and actually successful I felt. I, yes. I, I think that's extremely important because it is. If you're searching your entire life, I don't think you'll ever leave your legacy. You won't. You won't. Yeah. And it's not you don't leave with any of this material stuff. You don't. And, and you know, for me, I liked having one of nice of everything. Like, I, it's nice to have one nice car that you get in. You feel very abundant because, hey, I deserve it. Uh, you go into a home that you feel really good at. So now for me, it's, it's we all deserve to have good in our life. And just determine what that is. Because a lot of people see success that, oh, this guy's driving a nice car, big houses, and he's making $50 million or $100 million. But what you may not see is that he's maybe uh, stressed out. He's spending, he's making 50 million, but he's spending 80 million to make his 50 million. He's ready to go bankrupt. And there's a lot of other things behind that whole story. So again, success is really in our own hearts. And success is really like, I have a new purpose in life. And really, it has nothing to do with me at all. It's like my new purpose in life is like, how can I go and just help as many people that show up in my life, even if it's one person or a million people? How can I really just give and give and ask nothing for myself? And um, I really don't have too many attachments anymore. And the less attachments, and it's amazing that more of that material stuff shows up. And it's now I go, oh, thank you. I deserve it. But it's not making me, it's not saying, oh, I need it to keep me happy. I'm happy now. And that's, that's really the key is have sunshine now in your life. And other things, you'll just, if you have sunshine now in your life, you're happy now. That's a high vibration. You'll attract everything else. You will because you're high vibration. People want to be around high vibrational people that are optimistic. But they do. It comes right to you. <laughs> it comes right to you. Yes. There's, there's no efforting, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, I think that's what harmony is when you just let it all go and yes. say, let yes. the world flow. <laughs> and, uh, let it flow and let, <laughs> let things unfold how they need to unfold and, and realize that you know we talk about body mind and spirit you know it's like take care of all three of them man learn some stuff for this mind uh, of our brain because a lot of stuff that we're trapped in right now is just because we have these pathways in the brain so make sure you expand your mind and also your health too right Make sure you put high vibrational food in your body. So then you use food as energy. Food is either poison or it's remedy. It's, it's, it's medicine. And then, you know, spirit, go see God. If it's a Buddhist temple or a church or going inwards or running in the forest, have all three of them, body, mind, and spirit connect. And that's where you're just a powerful person, body, mind, and spirit. I really appreciate that because your perspective is it's open and non-judgmental. I I've seen a lot of people get again when they start comparing or try to fit in and it doesn't work for them. And they're still wondering why they feel like crap or heavy or yes, they just haven't found what works for them. Sometimes yes. you need a guide to yes. show them. And did have you ever had, a, let's just say life coach or a coach that kind of showed you the reins yes. or helped you out of a tough yeah, you know situation. I have to say that um, you know my biggest coach in my life was mainly um, Dr. Wayne Dyer I wow. learned a lot from Dr. Wayne Dyer and he was in about 17 of my books and 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 I just really learned a lot not only with him but also from his books and his readings and I really resonated with his his energy and so that's one. But however, I remember a while back I was on this call and there was all these superstars on this call and somehow I got on this call and, uh, and that was a question and there's like all these famous people. And I was like on that call. I don't know how I got on, but I was on. And, and, uh, and the question was, who's your biggest mentor? And I remember I was sitting at my beach house and I was looking at the ocean on this call and I had this, all of this story made up and I'm going to talk about a couple of my mentors. But when it was my turn, I said, my biggest mentor has been 
going inwards and connecting to that God energy or that universal energy because it always guides me in the right place. It always guides me. So my biggest mentor, Frederick, is knowing that my own intuition, my own feelings guided me through this life. That's my really my biggest mentor is my own intuition. God, if you want to, I'll use that word God in a big framework. God is guiding me. God is using me as a vehicle in this life. And I'm listening to God's energy or universe energy. And I'm not defining God in any way. I'm defining God as an energy. Sure, and I'm sure. being guided by God because I'm on purpose. I'm a vehicle to use as God to work through me. So that's my biggest mentor. <laughs> that is, that's beautiful. And um, a lot of this is as well, you know, this is a holistically speaking channel. And yes, I am the host. And yes. a lot of people, you know, the point of me doing this is to just bring new thought processes into their life or maybe yes they're on their journey and they you know we bring your insights into the life and this might seem a lot of like a lot of woo-woo to other people yeah if sure the word so what is the best way that you could recommend if someone connects to their innerliness well, you know, first off, uh, I come, again, back in a science background. I love science, man. I, I love that neuroscience. And I love it. And I, I'm a real, I like science. And for me, only thing that works in my life, I try it first. I love the word biohacking because I hack myself. If it doesn't work, then I'm like, oh, I, I will not believe anything in this lifetime unless I make it work on my head within myself. So for me, the, the biggest way to connect to the higher power or through church, Buddha, temple, whatever, is learning to quiet your mind. Because if you can't quiet your mind, how are you, you're outside of yourself. So somehow, there's all different ways uh, of going inward. So I find the way that works best for you, where your mind's not moving, it's not always thinking, it's get to a place where it's a void. It goes to that place where there's a nothingness. And that nothingness is where you connect to that God energy. And it's a power of that God energy. And everything's there in that moment. And uh, so I say connect through a science. And now meditation, all that kind of stuff, it's science now, guys. I've been talking about this for 20 years. Now we can take science to it. That's what I love about you know, what I do is also science and trying and biohacking myself to make sure it works. If it works, then I do it, man. And I totally agree. I've, I'm a hardcore science guy. Yeah. Um, but I also write, so I have that aspect. But at the heart, I am yeah. all about biohacking myself. And I've been yes. my biggest guinea pig. And yes. for me, because I'm, I am completely guilty of living in my head, Yes. Uh, all these thoughts and, and yes. some call it monkey mind, some call it chatter, whatever. But I have to literally get away from technology. Yeah. I travel. When you see me taking these pictures and I post them, I'm, I'm a half hour out of Columbus, Ohio, in the forest on some trail. And I, first I move. I, I kind of get the, the nervous system going, get fresh air, kind of calm myself down and just remove myself. I literally go in the middle of the forest and just sit. Wow. Until everything comes down. And wow. That is how I kind of empty well, out. You yeah, know? that is, yeah. And I think, yeah, we all could agree with that. So, I, I, I mean, even wherever you live, there's a lot of times I, I keep a sleeping bag in the back of my car. And I like going to parks and beaches and that kind of stuff. I always have it in the back of my car. But sometimes I strive and I'll see a beautiful park. And I'll take that sleeping bag and I'll just go lay underneath a tree or I'll go to the beach. And, but connecting back to nature, you know, it's, yes. that's one way. It's great, great. So there's no excuses. You know, for me, um, you know, a lot of times people go out of the house, you know, make sure their hair is calm and they're looking good in their clothes or with a woman makeup. You know, when I go out of the house, I make sure I, I do my breathing. Uh, I'm internally just balanced. And I'm just like completely, it's like nothing for my outer appearance. But when I'm out, I'm sunshine because I'm balanced. When you're not balanced within yourself, you can have all the makeup and the uh, nice suits on and everything. But if you didn't take time to whatever that is to balance you in the morning, then you're out there. You may look good, but you're going to get off knocked off balance. And how can you be uh, a service to anybody if you're off balance, right? 
And so that's one thing I always do every day is be balanced before I leave the house. <laughs> and I, I, um, I guess I can expand more of why we're talking about um, going into nature and calming ourselves. Yeah. You know, I'm a very scientific guy. I, Stanford now has a specific school on the studies of meditation and, yes. nature and the healing powers behind it. So we never at a time in human history have lived in a, such a stressed environment that puts us into fight or flight. Yes. And so we actually need the skills to come yes. out of that so we can be normal. <laughs> it, just, it really is, Frederick. It really is. You know, for me, um, I was never an academic guy. And even though I, I trained myself to be that, but when it came to meditation and visualization and like all, it's like, whoa, I'm a friggin' straight A student. And, and before it was sort of like, wow, you meditate this, but it's like now if I meet people and if they don't meditate or they don't go inwards, I'm looking at them going, Hey, you know, it's like, you better catch on, man. <laughs> and 20 years ago, people were looking at me and, oh, this guy is like a little different or, but no, you better start med. I don't give you a big CEO or you work in a corporate world. You better at lunchtime go meditate underneath the tree or you need to come home and meditate. If not, you're out of the game. You need to now talk about hormones, right? Women are four times more stressed in the workplace. Uh, hormones are off balance. Testosterone is going through the body. So we can get into the hormones and talk about more science. Off balance, you better find a way to balance yourself. And meditation is the way. So, yes. I, I love to end on that because it's, I'd say that's the number one thing that has changed in my life. Um, if I would have meditated my, my athletic career I, who knows where <laughs> i'd be but yeah i would love to end on that note um, yes if there's one thing that people could take from this i, I think meditation would change their life um, it would and i've yes. seen it i've seen it so many times and, and you hear about it now from all kinds of people from all yes. places all of a sudden meditation oh my gosh yes yes well, Stephen E., I, I want to really thank you for your time. And um, where can people go to learn more about you and what you do? Or maybe they yeah. want to write a book, they've been putting yeah. it off, and now they have an opportunity to work with the best. So, Yeah, well, thank you. And that's what I do. I attract purposeful people that want to write their purpose. And I make it really simple, 104 pages that write their book, 144 pages. And so, yeah, bestsellerguru.com, bestsellerguru.com. And also, you can find me, Bestseller Guru, on YouTube. I have over 100 YouTube uh, videos on book marketing. So, yeah, that's it, man. And, and if you're not purposeful, don't call me. <laughs> right. I look for purposeful people or people that want to be on that path. All right, Frederick, man. All it's right. Fun. Thanks for being here. Oh, yeah, anytime. You have a good day. All right. All right. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Listen every Friday at 10 a.m.